Okay. So good evening to everyone. I would like to welcome you to our discussion this evening. And today we are going to talk about uh, bad behavior. Yeah, from our previous discussion, we already talked about who a buyer is. Okay, we said the buyer is a customer. And uh, we went further to say, in order for us to identify the buyer, we can call a buyer as a man, as to M A N. And we say that stands for M stands for money. So you're looking for somebody who has good money and then they have authority to spend that money. Some people call it even the ability to spend that money. And then that person has a need. Once we can identify such a person, then we can say we have a buyer or a customer. Now, today we want to um, extend that further and try to understand then how do buyers behave? Okay. Why do people buy things which they buy? And then how do they buy? Where do they buy? When do they buy? As I said earlier on, this topic borrows a lot from psychological, I mean, psychology, sociology, anthropology, if you like, uh, and all these other social sciences. Yeah. That's where they borrow much of this. Now, before I could go further into this, I would like to hear your, your, your views. Why do you think the company, why do you think it is important for the company to understand the behavior of the buyers? Why could so you- I think I have an idea. <laughs> You have an idea? Yes. Yeah, share with us. Um, they, need to, they need to understand um, buyer or consumer's behavior because they need to maybe sell or create products that will satisfy the consumer needs in order for them to generate revenue. Okay, good. From that answer, I think you can see it's, it's a multiple, a full of many points in it. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, uh, let's start first of all, you, you're talking about uh, it's the need for them to understand the needs of the customers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we can put as point number one. Businesses must study the buyer behavior because then they can understand the, the needs of the customers including their wants, by the way, needs and wants of mm -hmm. the customers. Good. And then she also mentioned to say that way the company can be able to generate more revenue. Because once the product is satisfied the customer, remember what we get from the market, the customers will be willing to buy more of that product. So there's a correlation there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. What could be the other reasons, others, what do you think would be other reasons why, if you had a business, it could be important for you to try, not even to try to understand the behavior of the customers. I think understanding bad behavior um, mm -hmm. helps an organization in product development. Okay. Good. And who was that one speaking? I didn't hear your name. Uh, Alex. Okay. I agree with you, Mr. Alex. Because remember what you said, the, what the other lady said, the Martha said, you, must, you identify, it helps you to know the needs of the customer. And then you followed by a very important point, which says 
then you can come up with a product that can enable you to satisfy that need it's because you 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 begin to understand them you know them good others they, we want to generate more points there they, there are many reasons that you can think about which are the reasons you think Why could you, uh, you, if you had the business, want to understand the buyer, the, the, the behavior of the buyers? Yeah, yeah let's, you. Let's, 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 let's to, participate. Yes. There's need to forecast. Uh, to plan for the future, we need to plan how much stock we are going to need in the future, because most uh -huh. of the things they buy, buy, they buy in a certain pattern. It's like okay, a, good. It's like a habit. You buy this okay. every day, buy this every week, maybe every month, and so mm -hmm. you need to know how your customers are buying and in what okay. quantities. So that yeah. you, at least you are able to focus on the sales. You need to plan well and uh, how to restock your your products. Good. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Thomas. You at home or you are working? I'm working home. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, hear that. Yeah. Oh. Greetings to all the neighbors who are <laughs> shouting uh, as you are walking home. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, our, our person. <laughs> yeah. So what he's saying is this, it will enable you to focus your, your plans. Put that is another point. I don't know what number now, if you are numbering them, I don't know what point a number that one is. I've lost in touch because they're very exciting points that you are bringing out. Meaning, when you understand your customers, you focus your plans on how you can be able to satisfy them. The plans we're talking about, like the one we did, um, the marketing planning. Now, the starting point of your coming up with the marketing plan will be you understanding the behavior of the, the, the behavior of the buyers or the customers. Then you can focus. Even your strategies will be focused in that aspect as well. I'm sure you've, we've followed that one. Eh? Good. Thank you for your contribution. Any other contribution? Contribution, you think? And I like the way he's, he's coming up with the other aspects that come in in place. How then you can plan how to do your stock, how much you need to bring in this, because you begin to get the patterns. Yeah. Any other things that you uh, understanding the, uh, the the customers in their behaviors can help you as a business person? Okay, just a try. You sure? Uh, it helps the understanding the customer's behavior helps the company to predict whether mm -hmm. the customers will still buy in the future or they'll cut okay. off. Good. Thank you. Put another, that's a very good point. So call it, it can enable you to do, to conduct demand forecast and sales forecast. Yeah, you can eh, conduct a demand forecast and sales forecast. Because you know the patterns. You can even know in June they're going to buy more. Oh, in such a period they're not going to buy more, this kind of thing. Okay. Thank you. Any other points? You can see, beginning to see that the main reasons then that uh, a company definitely has to put much effort in uh, trying to understand their customers. I mean, not to leave the point that a customer is a justification of the existence of any company. We are there because of them, but we need to understand and or to know them much better. And now these are major, uh, major uh, uh, points that you're bringing out. Should I say then that, <coughs> excuse me, in addition to the company, 
What do you think about the government? Can the government also benefit from studying the bad behavior? Yes, what do the government in, how? Uh, I think when the like for example, FM identifies uh what products uh, they sell in a certain particular market. For example, if uh, the product is addictive, which means the company will make more sales, and mm -hmm. therefore the government's uh, interest in that company would be uh, their profits, for them to tax the profits that they make from a particular product. Oh, okay, okay, I get you. I get, so it's like almost like a, an indirect way of benefiting by the government yes yeah that's true but do you know that there's also direct way in which the government is going to be able to benefit from the study of bad behavior for example i'll call this as the resource allocation how can the government allocate the resources in an economy if they don't know where about the the, the bad behavior about the demand, about the customers who are gonna buy uh, those uh, products which where they are putting their money into. Think about it, really. When you understand the bad behavior, you want to behave like just any other politician who can even come and promise and tell you, we're gonna put a bridge here when there's no river at all. We're gonna put a school here when in that village, they are all just old people, for example. Why? Because they didn't understand who their customers are. What kind of people are within their constituencies. And uh, to say the least, you know, most Western, Western world, they depend very much when it comes to com uh, coming up with the policies of any development, nature of any nature of development believe me they want to understand the behavior of the customers first why could why are the people why do they want what they want yeah it's not ourselves who think that they got to do this because somebody must vote for them for example no and then they miss out what it is that can bring really development to the country this aspect is very important. Uh, uh, good think tanks in the world make use of this study of bad behavior. Okay, so having said uh, all these in terms of benefits, the question we are going to ask ourselves, what is then are we going to study? Okay, for a start, we will, uh, uh, we will uh divide the study into two broad uh, categories okay one side we want to study the consumer market the other side we want to study the organizational market Organization market sometimes is called business market, sometimes it's called government market, sometimes it's called just industrial market, it's got all different names. So consumer market on one side and organizational market on the other side. Okay. So after we have divided them into that broad perspective, what are we going to study then? Well, we want to answer three major questions. The first question is, who participate? Who participate in the way in which buyers make decisions? So we want to study about the participants of the buying process so that's the first question the second question is that we want to answer is how do 
buyers or customers make decisions. Okay. Let me go back to the first the first one. Who participates in this? In brackets, you should put their participants. Okay. And then you should put dash another bracket, you should put decision making unit. Decision making unit. Uh, which is abbreviated as DMU. DMU. Uh, please, now in the exams, when I start putting just these terms, uh, describe the DMU for this and this. This is where you see the people who have never been in this class. They start writing things they have never seen. Yeah. Okay, so DMU stands for decision making unit. In question number two, we said, how do they make decisions? Dash, you should say this is a process, decision making process. Decision making process. And you shall call it DMP. So DMP is not a political party. Sometimes you get to answers, you laugh to yourself in an exam. Somebody says Democratic Movement Party. Can you imagine that? All they think, all they think is about politics. So what does DMP stand for again? Decision making? Decision making process. Oh, okay. It answers the question, how do they? Okay. Good. Lastly is what factors influence the buying, uh, what factors influence the buying decisions? What decision? No, no, no. What factors influence the buying decision? So we call it this as FAD. FAD. Mm -hmm. Okay, so FAD stands for factors affecting decisions. Factors affecting decisions. Good. Have you noticed that now we have three columns? Three columns. Now, after we have done this, I want you to landscape your page. Landscape your page. I hope you are using a big A4, A4, uh, A4 paper or A4 something book, eh? Your booklet is A4. Now, you will have to divide that landscaped uh, page, your landscaped uh, page, you'll have to uh, divide it into three columns. Three columns. Mm -hmm. At the end of it, we are going to put uh, uh, the the uh, in, uh, a boundaries to it. By the way, boundaries to it. But the three columns, the heading of each column, which you also go to underline it. The first column is. DMU, put just say DMU, 
And we already said what DMU stands for. Okay. The middle column, call it DMP. DMP. Okay. Then the last column, you're going to call it FAD. FAD. Remember, I'm still describing these elements, eh? the, and you're going to find all these elements in here. They are, they are explained in detail inside here. But the, I, I'm trying to see if I can summarize all of this other than uh, we go through each one of those like this. It will be a bit uh, cumbersome. You may not follow easily. Good. So now, have you underlined, you should underline that column, all of it. Uh -huh. After you've done that, go to the middle of your page. You then draw a straight line across, which is horizontal. Good. So you have divided now your page into two upper part and lower part across the columns that we have created good then on the left sorry on the left of your page i want you to draw another vertical line a small margin that you should leave last to the left last go to the left just a small margin you underline a straight line from top to down Good. Now, if you have done that, the top part, you remember you have you had divided the, 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 the paper on, I mean, the page on two with a horizontal line on the middle. The upper part of the middle on the left, you should put a, uh, uh oh, somebody, okay, you should put B to C. B to C. Now, B to C stands for business to consumer. B to C stands for business to consumer. And business to consumer is those two broad categories we started with, which we said consumer market. So that is about consumer market. Okay. The lower part of your page, you should put B to B. B to B, which stands for business to business. Yeah. Now, if I may ask you before I move on, how many mattresses have you come up with? Or how many boxes are inside now when you look at your your, your page now. How many boxes are there inside? Sir, oh, that's, uh, confused. I'm um, just, yeah, 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 I'm also confused on how to draw it. Is it possible if you can use maybe Excel or Word and then you draw you draw the table so that we can see how to do it? Who is not confused? I am confused. Okay. Me, 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 teacher. I think so. I You're not it. confused, yeah? Uh, yeah. Uh, Sungen, you got it? Yes. How many how many boxes are inside? Uh one, two, three, four, five, six. And on uh on the six on top there's B N M E D M U. On the middle D M P at the far right there's F A D. And on the side Good. there's on the side we, I divided it. On the side, the upper part, there's B to C. And Good. on the lower part, on the side, that small column, on the mm -hmm. left, there's B to B. Good. So altogether, how many columns are inside? 
columns. Okay, empty. The ones I mean, how many? Empty. The empty, yes, which are empty. The, six. How many are they? Yes. There are six. six. Thank you. That's six. How many of us uh, got six? Yeah, I got six as well. You got six, six as, as well. well. Thank you. Good. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So now let's say let's see if we can help uh, Martha and who else said they are confused. Me, Hazel. Hazel and uh, Martha. Uh, they okay. they seem to com be confused. Yeah, yes. Can I take a picture and send it on WhatsApp? Uh, could that help, Martha? Me, I'm not online. Yes, right now. Uh, that can help. Who is not online now? Me, I'm not online. So maybe just do it, a first one on Excel. We see. A photo would be better in the group. Someone can take a photo. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. So I Good. think for this yeah. for these drawings, it would be easier if you just presented mm. it on the screen for everyone to see. Because everyone is going to have an excuse saying, I can't draw this, I don't understand. Someone will say they're offline. There's always going to be a reason why it can't be done. Well, are you able to share the document where all those are already drawn, including this uh, presentation? I... The presentation is there in front of you. Can you see the presentation in front of you? We can see it right now, but we needed the document as well, so that when we are studying and reviewing, because I'll just not check really, the plan. Not it's really not... a document, but if you could pres if Mr. Piri could present his screen and then open maybe Word or Excel, and then, as you explain, you should be drawing on the screen for everyone to see. It's just a suggestion. Oh. No, that suggestion is uh, is okay, but uh, that suggestion also shows uh, how easy it is for people not to follow instructions. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. well, I think we can we can follow, and we don't have to present it right now. What you do is you can just share the document later on, including these uh, PDF files that you're showing, so that we can also practice later on, but not now. Yeah. Please. No, it's okay. Me, I have no problem. I have no problem whatsoever. Now, I'm going to show you a very mean one. You, you should do this on your... Uh, and the uh, meantime, Songeni, have you sent it on the WhatsApp? Yes, The sir. one you drew? Good, thank you. Those of you that are connected, you can do that. You can have a look at that. Now, this is, uh, uh, I don't know whether you can see uh, what I'm showing on top there. Of course, we have a heading which is called BB or by behavior on top there. By behavior. Now, uh, can you be able to see for a start on the columns that I've put there? Yes, we've seen. Now, this is a way you should be sitting on your landscaped page. It should be a bigger one. Okay? So, what you are seeing there is DMU, DMP, and FAD. FAD, fund. We are studying by behavior. So, those are the three columns that I said you should do. And did you notice the Come a line which demarcates the, the two upper part and lower part. You are seeing that? Yes, sir. Good. Now, when you go to the left here, left side, I've put it here B to C and B to B. Have you see, are you able to see those two? Yes, we have. Good. And when you count this uh, columns or these empty boxes they are six can you be able to draw it that way on your paper on your page yes sir yes it's yeah it's not a very complicated thing actually no it's not okay now everybody are we at the same page yes sir good yeah. Yes, sir. Please don't uh, hesitate or don't feel shy to say, uh, me, I'm confused. I don't know here. There's nothing to be confused about. It's very straightforward and simple. 
but it's better you ask sungeni this is the same way yours appears which you have shared isn't it yes sir yeah, exactly thank you good good now i want to give you a minute to ensure that everybody has done that yeah and i want to see that everybody confirms that yes we have uh, done exactly that okay okay so we are now at the same page eh? now we can move this isn't it anybody to confirm that we can move yes we can okay good remember what we said that uh, you will read much of this in details in this way but this format helps us to uh, have a glimpse or a picture of what you're talking about yeah so now let's start with the first box there so we are in b to c and dmu inside that box b to c dmu all we want to understand is who are the people that participate when we are making decisions to buy something what to buy when to buy how to buy where to buy they are very rare that we have our own decisions on our own nature it tells us that actually we find ourselves having other people participate in the decisions that we make especially for many 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 i should say many many things that we do of course there could be some exception where you say i made this decision all by myself but you're going to see as we are discussing to say no actually it was not all by yourself <laughs> yeah so who are the people that participate in that in that decision put there number one in that box you should put there number one you should say family members so family members maybe you can think about uh, the way you made a decision either to join cavendish your you, either your parents or your spouses or your, your children might have participated in you to say choose this particular course choose this particular university choose but this particular thing and you went along to buy that some of the things could be that we are not even aware of them then our family members come and tell us think about the children the way they even influence the parents to buy certain things like even tv sometimes they can even make you buy a car by the way yeah children can make you to do those things so they're participating in the decision making that you're doing same with you maybe as parents you may also influence the young ones in terms of the decisions with they make so family members so even when a case study is given where family members are described and then you say what how are the family members participating in the decision to buy these particular items and things like that and now the implication of that is how are you even going to communicate the information if you're a marketer and who are you going to target now in the in the decision making and things like that as we are discussing this begin to think in those lines right eh? yeah how do businesses how do marketers uh benefit from them understanding that actually there are many people that are participating in this decision what you are making okay number two we can say friends you can say friends these are acquaintances and friends many of the times when we make decisions 
with consultation with the friends actually all the, the 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 friends tend to influence us in the way in which we are going to make decisions and number three we can call this as workmates workmates uh, when you say workmates that's the zambian way uh if others they call them workmates uh or schoolmates or college mates sometimes even church mates by the way they can be able to participate in your making decisions so can we just call them colleagues ah uh, you like that eh? and mm -hmm. sometimes you, you next time you're going to tell them can't we just call them comrades <laughs> that's fine no. that's fine with <laughs> that's fine with me yeah okay. but but formally we can call this uh, like uh yes your colleagues remember we even mentioned others to be acquaintances yeah yeah so those are terms so in short look at uh, these people who are close to you so to speak yeah number four uh we can also uh, the people that uh, you 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 admire uh, uh you can call this as neighbors for example i wanted to say people that you admire yeah maybe you admire something from your neighbors yeah it can be a role model some yes a role model that you can be able to they said i want to be buying like that maybe you can look at that yeah so uh maybe Mr. Mwawa? Inspiration. Well, Romodos are able to inspire you. Yes. And is, are you also inspired by family members, for example? Maybe in your family, Mr. Mwawa, somebody is educated, very educated. So you say, I want to beat my uncle. Do yes, you have such, such things? Yeah. Yes, very exactly. Yeah. yeah. So you get motivated and is, you want to go to school and further your education and things like that. You begin now to appreciate already that when we are making decisions, we are looking and maybe comparing ourselves to certain other people. Apparently, what, most of the things we buy, if it's neighbors, we can think about, uh, uh, and this is very true in most in the towns, eh? a neighbor where in the neighborhood, one neighbor buys a car, just be assured that within a short period in that neighborhood everybody else will be owning a car those of you that are old enough you may remember uh, when the families were buying a, a black and white tv in no time everybody else was moving from radio to black and white tv and then they said ah oh, no a color tv when they hear the neighbors got any color tv ah they, even the children come they, no 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 our friends are watching this and and they, they they pressurize the parents and they all they begin to buy those things yeah so you're going to see then as you, you as, as as a marketer that people make decisions with other people participating so the question you remember what we want to ask ourselves is who do we target then with our message and what type of message do we want to send out there okay that would be able to influence other people to buy good let's go down there we are still doing dmu but now we are going to look at b2b b2b situation okay so it's business to business or organization uh, market that you are looking at now here it's a formal kind of arrangement yeah well as the one we have just mentioned on top there is quite informal but this one is quite formal so who are the participants in this uh, process who participate in the decision making the first one you're going to call these as the uh, gatekeepers gatekeepers okay who is a gatekeeper uh, in an organization a gatekeeper is anybody who filters information that is supposed to go to the bosses anybody and that includes perhaps if you want even security guards can be gatekeepers 
personal assistants. In those days, we used to call them secretaries, typists in those days. Assistant too. So these are people, before you see the final person, they're there to filter you or to filter information. So you call this as gatekeepers. Okay? Uh, uh, number two, we can say are uh, initiators. Initiator. An initiator is the person who triggers the process or who starts the process. Yeah. So he can see the problem in an organization, for example, and then he, he starts to say, no, no, we need to buy this particular material or this particular spare part or this particular machine. That person is called an, initi an initiator. Okay. Number two, three, sorry. Then we have number three. We can call this person as influencer. Influencer. Now. Sir. Yabo. How do how do gatekeepers influence uh, decisions? Like explain how they I don't know how to put it into words, but how do they how are they decision making? How do how they influence how do how do how do they participate? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Martha, are you working? No, I'm not. Not not okay. Sooner you'll be looking for a job, eh? Yes, I think so. Good. Well, that we let's assume so. Okay. Okay. And uh, uh, when you'll be looking for a job, mm -hmm. it's very rare that unless uh, the decision maker is your uncle. Mm -hmm. uh, uncle is the one you call Achimwene? Amalume. Oh, Malume. Okay, good. So now, uh, you go, unless uh, the decision maker is your Malume, you are going to go through to get into that company, inside the company, you go through the security guard. Mm -hmm. Now, the security guard can tell you, or there is work. Mm -hmm. And he can make you to turn away. So the fact that, yes, the way the fact that they've um, made you not to see the decision maker, and it's not about job alone. Even the people who go around to sell, marketers, mm -hmm. the first roadblock they're going to face is the security person. Mm -hmm. Now, that person has participated in the decision making by blocking others who come. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Now, Let's go, let's say you go, you have gone through the that security guard. The first place you're going to meet is at the reception. Mm -hmm. The receptionist has to ask you, what do you want? Do you have an appointment? Mm -hmm. They are filtering you. If you manage to go through that, they will tell you, you can't see the boss, just go and see first of all this human resource or assistant too. Then you go there, but your aim is to ensure that you want to reach there decision maker because you know all of these are not going to allow you to get a job or to buy from you okay so no, they have participated oh thank you they've participated because they're able to filter that kind of information that should be able to reach the best the final person mm -hmm. uh and then we mentioned about the initiator and we were now on influencer in an organization an influencer is uh, tend to be a senior person yeah, senior, not necessarily in years alone, but the senior maybe has been around in that organization for some time and then has got experience of what goes on. So he's an experienced person, somebody who has good skills, somebody who's got the technical know-how, somebody who's knowledgeable about that product. And people just have this respect for him, tend to ask him, yeah, Mr. Banda, how can we... What do you think about this? How can we, or where can we buy this particular item? That person is called an influencer. But in most cases, they tend to be technical people who are skilled. 
especially if you are buying machines, you're buying even some raw materials, you got to go and ask them what they know. Or they experience because they've been around for quite some time in that organization. So that is number three. Number four, we can now say uh, decider. Decider, okay? Uh, no doubt, decider is maybe the very overall boss, somebody who says, who, who gives a yes or no. Yeah, somebody who can give a yes or no to whether you should go ahead to buy or not. Straightforward on that one. Number five, we are going to say this is a financier. Let's call this financier. Okay. And uh, in, in uh, an organization, a financier could be these are guys in the uh, accounts, accounts department. Why could we say that? You know, these are the people. Whatever decisions you're going to make anywhere else, you're going to go to them and ask them, do we have a budget for this particular item? Do we have money for this? And you can imagine, you know, how they behave, these accountants. Yeah. Sometimes, even when they have money, uh, they're going to tell you, no, no, we don't have a budget line for this. But the cash is there, but no budget line for it. Because you Mr. didn't budget Perry. for it. Yeah, Mr. Bo. Perry. Yeah, sorry, I missed uh, number four. Would you kindly just uh, repeat it for me? Decider. Okay, all right. Thank you, sir. Good. So, the people in accounts tend to have that role to play in ensuring that uh, the funds are self-guided anyway. Yeah. Now, beyond just, just an account accountants or people in accounts, Financiers can also include the uh, uh, creditors in form of bank loans, for example, that you get, or other financiers, venture capitalists, you name them, okay? Especially when you are now, your decision is to do a bigger, bigger project. You have to include them. You have to consult them. Yeah. And then they can also say yes or no. Yeah, uh, like the debate sometimes people say, look, donors say, they say no subsidies should be given on food to third world countries, but them they are busy subsidizing their own farmers out there because they give us money. Eh? They're donors, they're financiers. They can say what they want to say about how their money is going to be used. And we don't make decisions without consulting them in, in any case anyway. <laughs> so, because they are financiers. Number six, we can uh, call this uh, number six as buyers. Buyers. Now, don't, go into, don't get confused. You remember we are talking about buyer behavior. But the buyers here are those in the purchase and supply department. Yeah, these guys, you're going to, you're going to involve them anyway. Because they're the ones who are going to source. They're going to tell you what to, uh, how to buy the right material at the right price and the right place and the right time and all those rights. Yeah, they can be able to tell you these individuals because they're specialized and that's what they, they do on a daily basis. Good. Number seven, the last one is user. User. User is a person Who's going to use that product which you are buying? It's a machine, and it's going to be used by these machine operators. Don't ignore them when you are making decisions. To say, are they just these ones who just tell them what we have bought? No. They are actually the people who can tell you, even the kind of machines, because they are the ones working on it every day or working with it every day. Don't ignore them. They're very important. You consult them. Let them participate in the decision making. In fact, when you look at uh, these, some of these roles can be combined, by the way. For example, the initiator can be the same person who is a user. 
because the user is the one who's going to tell you the problem of the machine. It's going to want be the one to tell you the materials are finished. So he initiates the process because he has got the vested interest. Is the one who's going to use it. But some rules are not good to combine. For example, what could be wrong to get the decider to be the buyer? What do you think? You take because the person. Uh huh. If the decider is also the buyer, you influence the decision. You will just go straight yeah. and buy. Yeah. Ha. And where do you think he's going to buy from? From his uh, relative or anyone that he knows whom he's going to favor. Exactly. The guys they drink together, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So s some roles, in order to ensure that he, there's transparency, less corruption, and all those things, professionalism, you may not want to combine them. Okay, in an organization. Good. So these are the participants in the decisions in an organization or in a B2B that we've been talking about. Good. Let's move on to now another area, DMP. Uh, I have a question before we move on. Yeah, sure. Uh, on the fifth one, on the financer, you gave an example yes. of accountants. Uh, who is yes, really a financer when it comes to accountants or the people who really own the money? In this context, I mean shareholders, because if an accountant is just told what to do, so who is really the financer there? Very good question. Remember, I had, I had, I had, I had said, depending on the decisions, bigger decisions, which uh, pertain to projects, for example, or buying big items, definitely you consult the shareholders, the owners. You consult. Uh, the banks who's going to give you the loans or any kind of finance as i said some of them are joint uh what do you call them venture capitalists okay or other creditors who are going to do that now when it comes to smaller things which are on operational basis there you will find yourself working with accountants i'm an accountant uh, Mpulubusi. Uh, it's uh, I'm not an accountant. I'm in IT, but mm -hmm. under finance. Under finance, ka? Uh -huh. Aha, you are the ones who, who give people problems. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> no, 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 I'm just joking. But you have seen how accountants who always, they, they, they are always consulted, consulted, and they're always saying, Either there's no budget line or there's no money for this or no, 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 this cannot be done. This can be done. This can be done or this not be done. Yeah, this is exactly what we go through here. Whenever I want to buy something, the accountants uh -huh. are always giving problems. Yeah. Yeah. They are employed because to it's... give you problems. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you... You know, well, they call it a, you, 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 they are custodians of the finances anyway. So they have to be strict. Yeah. There are also advantages and disadvantages of that. That's another topic. If you want, we can talk about that. It's at, an, at another forum. But for time being, we are just appreciating people who are participate in it when people are making decisions. Okay. Let's now go to DMP. Uh, let's make sure I want to make sure that Madam Martha, we are not losing you. No, oh, sir, I'm right here. I am paying attention. And now you know the column in which we are in now. Yes, DMP on uh -huh. B to C. Thank you, Madam. And yes. what did we say DMP stands for? DMP. Mm -hmm. Decision making, uh, hold on. Decision making process. Good. And please don't, when you find in the exam, don't say Democratic Party at the Democratic Malawian Party. Ah, ah. <laughs> we don't have a Democratic Malawian Party. Wow, well, you, you can create yours. <laughs> People have created this in the exams. 
Okay, May so I just I get won't... yeah, I just get confused. Democratic <laughs> movement. Uh -huh, exactly. Honestly, I've seen this in the exam myself. And the other one that really shocked me <laughs> was uh, I just said, can you describe PLC? Now, these are guys who never attended the class, eh? And said, describe PLC with the use of a diagram. Now, according to him on the street, he knows PLC stands for Public Limited Company. Now, he gets stuck. Where, he, where what kind of a diagram is this that they can give to the Public Limited Company? Then he copies from somebody who's this. And he draws this and, mama, mama. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. So now that you're attending, that would be very nice. Sami, are we together? Yes, sir. Are you sure? Yes. Yeah. OK, so let's look at DMP for B2C. So what are the process that uh, we go through when we are making a decision to buy anything? That when you say process, these are steps. Okay? Now, these steps tend to follow each other. Uh, this DMU, you can mumble jumble them, but the process really try as much as possible to follow them. Not even trying, you just have to follow them, step after step. So step number one, okay. Step number one, which has called it need recognition. Need recognition. Step number one, need recognition. Okay, who can you remind us what is a need again? To start buying anything, there must be a need that must arise and it must be recognized. That's what we mean. So what is a need? Uh, Could you help a us? Need, yes. yes, Mr. Moho. A need can be something that you can't live without. Ah, you see, you are the one who's going to make me give you zero. Aha, na kukwila eni. Eh? A need is a felt deprivation of something. Thank you. Ah, the book. Now you can talk. Ha. How, are the, how are the young ones? They are fine, oh. sir. <laughs> Good, thank you. <laughs> she will never forget that. Did you hear that, Mr. Moore? Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't answer like that, Bamuo. Because we debated, and that's why you can see people can still remember that. I wish you were there in the first uh, class that we enjoyed. Okay. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So, what does it mean? It means there's a deficiency. You are feeling that something is missing. This is what your expectations is on a higher level, and this is what is there present at a lower level. That gap is what you are calling as a need. So you are feeling deprived of something. And by the way, that need can be a reason or recognized from internal or by external forces. Internal is when you feel hungry, for example, when it's a time to sleep, is a time to uh, do satisfy the inner thing, the inner in need that you feel. What about the external? External is where uh, somebody could you uh, maybe Hannah Maila, Cholwe, your mic. Okay, thank you. So the external factors could be those factors like you smell something good or you see something that you admire, or you hear somebody tells you about something, then 
you recognize that, oh, I also need this thing. And this is where now you see, yeah, thank you very much. This is where you see those people that we said participate in our decision making, they can even trigger those needs. Okay, now, after the need is uh, uh, recognized, step number two. Yeah, now I can even go here so that you can follow quickly, easily. Yeah. Now, you have what, what we can call as a information search. Information search. Okay, information search simply means uh, you're looking for ways in which to satisfy that need. For example, if you feel hungry, what information would you be looking for? What's available in the fridge? Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> I agree with you, Grace. Yeah. Well, where is the and restaurant? Where's the restaurant? Thank you. That's a kind of information you want to look for where you can buy or get the food. That's what comes up. Number three step, because there are many alternatives of how you can satisfy that need. You remember that's what we said. Now you need to evaluate. So you number three step is evaluate alternatives. Okay, evaluate alternatives. There could be many bases for you evaluating, but in most cases, it could be something like uh, basing on the price, uh, basing on the quality, basing on the quantity sometimes, or basing on the status, on the uh, how perception, you know, all these other things can begin to crop in. Yeah. They're going to influence you. Okay. So you evaluate. Is this restaurant, is it expensive or cheap? Or can I afford it or not? You get it? So you're evaluating now. Where are you going to, to, to eat? In the fridge, you, you begin to say, what, what is in the fridge? What can you cook fast? I'm very hungry. You begin to evaluate. Okay. So after evaluation now, what do you do? Number four, purchase decision. Now you make a decision, I'm going to buy this. Aha, I've seen the restaurant that I should go for. Angry Lion, because uh, here in town, I think Angry Lion is much a uh, good standard. I can uh, do the, I can go there. Uh, it's okay. Waiting for 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, I can manage. Yeah. You've now decided. Which uh, Angry Lion is this one? Nah, let's go to the one in East Park. East Park, sorry of you, some of you, not in, 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 in Zambia. Uh, these are some like... Uh, uh, trading malls or the malls that we have around. Yeah. So you decide now, let me go to this particular place and things like that to go and buy that. And for sure, you go there and you purchase and you eat. You fulfill your hunger or your feeling of deprivation. Number five, we call it post purchase. Sorry, so I didn't get number number four. What did you say it now? Okay. Purchase decision to buy. What is to buy in your mother tongue? Sorry, number four was make decision. To buy. Purchase decision. It's called purchase decision. That's what oh, that's number four. Yes, please. And then what's number five? Post purchase decision. Okay. Post purchase decision. Yeah. 
I was asking somebody, I don't know who, would, who it was. Uh, was it you, Innocent? I said, what, what do you call purchasing? What do you call purchasing in your mother tongue? I don't think it was me. Uh, it wasn't you, eh? Okay, your voice was quite similar. Who said that? Okay, what about in your mother tongue, innocent? Ugutenga. My mother tongue is Ugutenga. Ugutenga, yeah. Oh, it's in the belly? Yes, in progress is in the belly. Oh, oh. Okay, Ugutenga. Yes, that's like buying, purchasing, yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Ah, quite similar like a uh, Zambian language. Yeah. Because Ukutenga, Ukutenga is Zambian <laughs> language, but you are not just picking it for free. No, you are buying. Okay. Thank you. Good. Now, post purchase decision. Uh, after you've eaten or you have used this product, or you have put it in your house. How do you feel afterwards? Yeah. How do you feel afterwards? You see, this is how we human beings are. Even after buying something, which you can call meticulous, everybody is talking good about it. There is always a feeling. Some can be positive feeling, some can be negative feeling. Now, the most difficult feeling that money, uh, money marketers must manage is what you can call negative. Or there's a way that they use dissonancy, a feeling of dissonance. This is like regretting. Sorry, may I just give example? Uh, those of us that are married. Do you remember how we were promising each other during courtship and things like that? And then uh, and afterwards, <laughs> now I'm following the stories that you used to read in the, when you were young, eh? That's when I heard that word, Chedari. Now, then, you are you are now together with that person at home. You know of now, do you even call it Chipikisha Club now? Uh, we just stay just because. Now, can you imagine if it were your products? Do you really think the customer would come back to buy your product again? With that dissonancy or feeling of, of regret? And therefore, what can you do? Not because, at all. yeah, they will not come back. And now, Grace and the rest of you, we all realize and you know that the rest of the business or much of the business depends on these customers coming back to buy now and then. And uh, sorry to say that, uh, you know, when customers regret, they tell more than 30 people. But when they're happy, they're satisfied, they tell less than four, five people. So are you still talking? And the research showed oh. that. Now can you? Okay, thank you. I'm kicked in. I was kicked <laughs> out, then I'm kicked in back. Okay. Yeah. But you can still see my presentation? 
Yes. No, we can't see anything. We can just hear you. Yes, we can't I can't see. see anything. No, I can see the presentation. You can't see anything. Can see Good. Okay, I can see it. No, I can, I can see, see it. it. I see it. Calm okay. down. Okay. Thank you. It, Thank you. Okay. So, uh, expect this to be happening in the new normal. You're kicked in, kicked out. <laughs> kicked in, kicked out. So, okay. Now, we were saying, how can then we reduce on this part of that feeling of regret that most cases customers go through? Yeah. There are two or three points that we can keep in mind as marketers. The first, uh, first of all, uh, can you flip your page and put it under post, post uh, purchase decision? I want you to put uh, to say expectation. We are discussing expectation is equal to experience because it's about expectation and experience experience versus, i mean expectation versus experience expectation versus experience i hope you put that now what would be the feeling when e expectation is equal to e experience what is the feeling? How could the customer feel? Excited. Yes, Excited. satisfied. We call it satisfaction. So put that. Whereby, what about uh, when expectations are higher than, you remember, or greater than, put that uh, mathematical symbol called greater than experience. What's the feeling? No feel regret. Regret, yes. Yeah, this is I the one we were talking about. You said okay. dishonest. Good, Jolwe. Yeah. So we shall call it dissonancy. That's a feeling. What about uh, when expectation is less than experience? What's the feeling? Sir, sir, sorry. The one before you said is dis, dis what? Dissonancy, D I double S O mm -hmm. D I double S O N A N C E. Okay, thank you. Yes, and that's a that's that's the feeling of regretting as to why. Have you felt have you ever felt like that after buying something? Uh, who was online? Yes, I didn't get any 60% of the time. You Oh, 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 Martha, then you have to be always be, <laughs> uh, set your information properly. <laughs> Especially when you're purchasing online, that happens a lot. A lot, eh? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, okay. Good. So, sorry, now let's go, come back. When E, which is expectation, is less than experience, what do you think would be the, the feeling? I want somebody who has not uh, participated yet. I know him, but he's been quiet. Uh, a number of guys, let me pinpoint that one. He's, he's, he's moved out. Eh? Uh oh, Charles. Charles, are you there? Charles. Uh oh, we're missing Charles. Okay, Mr. Sawa Sawa. Yes, sir. Your expectations. Yes, sir. I'm listening. Your expectations are less than your experience. What is it? What what kind of feeling that that you can have? Meaning, a product that you bought or a service that you have received is more than what you expected. What could be your feeling? You feel very great, sir. Oh, okay. Is it great a feeling? You feel excited. 
<laughs> much better much better okay so the feeling is called actually uh it's called the um, delight delight and then the americans call it wow okay you have heard about that wow yeah wow is like a surprise eh? and the people big that excitement which Mr. Sawasawa has mentioned about. Yeah. Now, you as marketers have to work on these two, satisfaction and delightment. The customers ought to be satisfied and try as much as possible to delight them and try to avoid dissonancy. Now, how do you try to, uh, to, to, to to avoid dissonancy, ladies are very good in this aspect, mind. Very, very good. And uh, we need to commend them. They cool our tempers always. Yeah. Of course, we're talking about good ladies, of course. Yeah. Sami, aren't you talking about the uh, good ladies? <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, good, good, good. Yeah. Now, dissonancy, you should avoid it in business by not over-promising and under-delivering. It's the worst thing you can think about in business. Don't over-promise and under-deliver. I remember in those uh, old days of ours, when we used to write it to my letters, it says, no, when we meet, the sky will turn into red or into yellow. When you, this, in a me, uh, like me, I don't sleep over you. What, what? No, I don't know whether people still write such letters. Now you just WhatsApp, WhatsApp, WhatsApp. Eesh. Now, when actually now you are together, are you going to continue with those romantic uh, things that you were giving your colleagues or not? You overpromised. I like uh, had one young man who was saying, "No, you see me. Uh, you see we. I'm rich, very this and this, uh, and all these houses you see here and all the vehicles they will remain mine when the, my old my old folks die." How do you promise a girl like that? And now they're not dying in quickly and the girl says no but you promised me this so you started blaming your parents that yeah they are not dying quickly <laughs> please don't over promise and under deliver in business you are better off to under promise and over deliver then you're going to delight the customers they're going to go like wow I didn't, I didn't expect this. That is a feeling that we must always. Okay. Uh, just a question. Yes, uh, Mr. Innocent. On the same of a promise and under deliver, if, for example, mm -hmm. it sells, at what mm -hmm. point do you draw the line from over promising? If you're, let's say, advertising something and you want the customer to really be intrigued in that product. Good. That line is to you to recognize it in your organization. In, in short, be as honest as possible. This we can do. Remember when we were doing even marketing planning, you were assessing your strengths and weaknesses, weren't you? You begin to know this we can do, this we can't do. Now, there are many businesses that can even tell you no, we can, this one we can deliver. We can do this. Without knowing that they're, they're actually th putting other people or thinking of other people in mind. They get the contract and then they go to some other person, subcontract or telling that person, can you help? I want to do this because I promised this person. Uh, you are fortunate, but so what do you mean they can do this and yet they cannot do it? So the the 
the question of saying what what draws where is the line the line is looking at your capabilities what you're able to do and what you're not able to do don't say things you are unable to do even when it looks lucrative and even when there's a lot of money involved into it yeah only to find that you can't do that wow you'll be fortunate if they don't even take you to court anyway to, because they want to recover their money yeah so that will depend on your activities and your 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 your, your honest and the policies of that company which to do you may say suppose you felt your didactic capacity you can do it but circumstances have changed better go back to the customer and tell them honestly this is what we are capable to do and because of these circumstances we are unable to do it now what do you think would you give us more time or if you want to go to another person to supply to you you can be able to do that what do you think Mr. Innocent. Hello? Uh oh. Am uh, I, is my, are my people? We are here. You are sir. hearing me, eh? Yes, uh, loud okay. and clear. Yes, sir, I'm here. Okay, good. So that's the way in which you can be able to manage this aspect of expectation versus experience and for me i think this part is very important because the customers would be able to come back to you and you're going to stay with you depending on how you handle this aspect of expectation and experience good so give a good experience to the customers as as give them a good service so to speak yes sarah my band is about to deplete so if it's only hey oh you're recording i didn't know that you're recording uh so what could i do with that uh, how can i come to help how can i help you you should send the videos through the email please i've never received any yeah, because I've never sent any, and I thought the school must be sending to you. Okay. If not, they you don't see how. I think it would be best okay. if you mm -hmm. sending yourself, because they've never sent like any. How do I send myself? Get our email. You, said, uh, you need to get in touch with e! the lecturer. That's what they tell you. Yes, that's what they said. That you need to get in touch with the lecturer to send the videos. Mm -hmm. Or maybe post on Khan. Oni? No, not on Khan. So you said you, you said you it from on Khan. Yeah, because to me, when I record this, I was told it goes straight to Khan, and the students will be getting this on Khan. No, there's nothing. No, they, they, they lied. They lied in short. They don't even know how so what, works. What's the connection between Khan and the Google Meeting then? There's no, connection. There's, no connection. there's no connection hey. Hey. whatsoever <laughs> they over promise wow, so <laughs> 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 yes sir they are <laughs> <under -deliver. laughs> <laughs> please don't you have no, dishonesty okay let's move on then uh, let's do quickly the the other one, which is now DMP for B two B. DMP for B two B. Good. DMP for B two B. Good. Uh, where is the B two B now? I'm trying to find B two B because these are. Uh, let me see where I can find B2B here. Uh, 
Okay. Okay, they're buying this is good. Here the initiators and things like that. Oh yeah. B to B process. Good. I have the process here. Can you see that process in 2.2.8? Yes, sir, we can see it. Yes, sir. Good. Yeah. Good. So uh, put it in your box. Yeah, I've put that so that people can easily follow it. Put in your in your box there, in a B2B. The first one is called problem recognition. Uh, here it's good to put it in recognition of a problem or opportunity. Because sometimes people think when you say problem, they always think about the challenges or difficulties. No, problem can also mean opportunity. So for example, there's a breakdown of machine or materials are finished in a company. That is a problem as a reason, but it's also an opportunity that has a reason. So step number two, need description. And here it's given as general need description. What that means is, what do we need to do? This need is not the same as the one in the consumer. Remember, in the consumer, we define that need to mean felt deprivation. But this one is you're describing steps to be taken or action to be done. So what do, you need to, what do we need to do? For example, if a machine breaks down, what could be some of the uh, actions that a company can do? One? Fix it. Fix it. Thank you, Sami. Two? Buy a new one. Buy, buy a new one. Yes. Three? Throw it away. And, and when you throw it away, what are you going to do? You leave the business car? You stop that business, eh? Yeah. You can also abandon the business. But you can also throw away and get a new technology. Yeah, go get into a new technology. It's not the same as replacing, but get into a new technology. Any of those four are what we are calling here, what you need, what you want, what are you going to do? That now a problem has reason. After you've described what you want to do, for example, uh, we said we're going to fix it or repair it or buy a new one. Now we go to step number three. We're calling this as product specification product is a specification now what do you mean by product specification this is now where you need to say if it is to repair you describe the spare parts that you need to go, going to do the the size the what of the parts that you need to buy for you to repair if it is a new machine you're going to describe the size of that machine the capacity of that machine the the source of that machine and thing i mean the 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 capacity of that machine, the, uh, uh, the features of that machine and things like that. This is where you do product specification. Okay, now we have specified the, the product. Then uh, we have uh, step number four now. I hope people are writing that. This is straightforward in there. Now you do supply search. Supply search. Who can supply this machine that we are looking for or spare parts that we are looking for? And uh, uh, what that entails is uh, uh, you can go on your uh, database to check uh, people that have been supplying you before, or you can even advertise in the newspaper as who to be supplier, or you can. Uh, uh, go to some associations to help you to identify the suppliers. So you are searching who can be able to supply. Then number five, step number five, uh, you do what is called supply solicitation. Supply solicitation. This is now when the ones that you have uh, uh, or you have called for people to supply, or you have called for people to uh, 
to reply to your requisition, they give you what their capabilities are, what they're able to supply. That's what solicitation is all about. So they are now replying. As we are capable, we can supply this uh, so much at this and this and this. They're going to tell you that. We have we even give example. We are the ones that supply to ZCCM. We are the ones that supply to Zesco. We are the ones that did this and the other ones boasting this and that. So what do you do? The next one, number six. Now you do the supplier selection. Supplier selection. In the supplier selection, this is like where you evaluate now. To those that have sent in, or maybe they have even put a tender, now you, you got to choose which one can be able to supply to us. Now, there could be so many uh, bases for evaluating, as we mentioned earlier on. It could be price, it could be capacity to do that, it could be additional services they, which they are proposing they are going to do when they supply this product, quality of what they, of their job, what they do, the reputation that they have and things like that. That become, all those become the basis for evaluating and selecting uh, the would be supplier. Now you, you zero in on one or two. Uh, step number seven, you now give them a purchase order or contract. That's what you give them, purchase order or contract. You sign you, each other binding contract or order. Uh, we want you to be supplying uh, so much per month, for example. And they'll be able to supply that. Okay. Then uh, the last one, after the supply, you, you, you try the product and it is working well and things like that or not working well, what do you do? The last one, step number eight, is called performance evaluation. How is this product performing that we purchased? Yeah. How is it performing? I think it, take, it takes us back to those things we talked about in the under B2C. Expectation versus experience. But now, in a company, uh, I hope everybody has written those eight steps and have explained what they are. Now, in this case, it takes us to this kind of buying situations. For example, let's start from the bottom here. What you're calling a new task buying. When it is a new task buying, you're going to go through all the eight steps that we have mentioned. From recognizing the problem to performance evaluation. Because it's a new task. It's unique. You're doing it for the first time, for example. Okay? Now, let's say at the level of performance, you find that uh, the product has not performed to your expectations. Your expectations are higher than your experience of that product. What do you do? Then you, the following time, you're going to enter into what is called modified rebuy. Modified rebuy. Modified rebuy simply means, for example, suppose we go back to here. You begin to recognize to, the problem is still there persisting. It has not ended. So now, and you have said, no, we know what we need. Where do, did we go wrong? Is it on the product specification? Or is it on the supply search? Either of these two might be the source of non-performance of that product. Suppose it was because you recognize uh, uh, we left out one feature of the product and therefore product specification is a step where we went wrong. Because the end of this, you go wrong, the rest might go wrong. So what happens? You go back and uh, specify this to buy another one. That kind of buying is what we are calling as modified rebuy. Now, you're modifying because you're adding other features or removing other features, whichever way 
whichever applies. Yeah. So you modify now the buying of that uh, process. On the other hand, after purchase uh, the performance of the product, you're very, very happy. Wow. Yeah. This is what it's given us more than what we expected. What do you think? Do you have to go through the next time you're going to buy again the same item? You got to go through all the processes? No. You do what is known as straight rebuy. Straight rebuy. Some people call it even a top up. That's another nickname that it has. Top up. Yeah. So it's some people just call it to say it's a John, John, not John sent me, but it's called uh, John. Can you supply? You just pick up your phone, call the same supplier because you're happy with them. Can you supply now? We are running out of this, those materials, or uh, we need more spare parts for that machine, or come and repair for us, whatever situation is. So that is called straight rebuy because it's gonna buy from the same people. They come on just to replenish. Good. So this is the process that you go through. Uh, when D, That's the DMP for B to B. Yeah. Now, you, you, you got to still think of this. When you look at your diagram now, especially on the B to B, what I want you to look at is what role do these uh, participants, gatekeepers, initiators, influencers decided, what role can they play in any of those steps? For example, in the problem recognition, who do you think would be the major person who is going to uh, perform or undertake that process of problem recognition? Which user. participant? User. User. Thank you, Sami. It can be user or the one we're calling as initiator. Okay. Yes. Those were the ones. So now you can go on like that. You see how they match. Some of those roles, they can do two, three things in the process. Some can only do one part of it and things like that. So you need to be able to explain how those things work out. Good. <sighs> Any question? Uh -huh. You sure that he, he, this, this area, you really understand it and master it well. Believe me. Uh, as I said already, uh, when you just use the uh, acronyms like, can you explain the DMT, the DMP for B to B? People already get confused, and they write things which I've never heard of. <laughs> but now you know. Oh, it's talking about these steps. Oh, it's talking about it, and make sure that you you are able to align them accordingly. Is that okay? Yeah, ensure that you yes, are able to do that. Thank you. So in the next session, because now it's 20 hours and that's where we, we, we might come to an end. In the next session, we will spend a bit of time on the FAD now. We might start with F, FAD B2B and then do FAD B2C. So is that okay? Yes, please. I have a question, but it's not concerning what we, we've learned. We're concerning uh, what, sir? My class. Has it been moved to yes, please. to Tuesday instead of Friday? Or maybe it was meant for DL students because I didn't attend last class. I had some issues. Are you what is your stream? I, um, I'm a regular student. Day. Day or day? Oh, your day. Those yes. day are the ones we do on Fridays. Oh, this so is for evening. For... 
Oh, okay, okay. Evening. All right. But you know, you know, you know, Cholwe, it's a very good question also. For me, sir. Uh, yes, mother. Last time you said that you weren't going to divide the classes just yet. You said we should we should keep attending both today's class and the class that we're going to have, I think, Friday, if I'm not uh, confusing the days. You said we should keep attending both classes until a decision is made. Okay, so what is your decision? You want to be attending know. in the evening you, you or said, morning? You said that you would let us know what the next step ah. is going to be taken. Oh, decision yeah, concerning whether they would be able to combine. Yes. Uh, uh, Mwendi, uh, no decision yet. Pavuta <laughs> drop. Yeah, it's a I think it's so. I in your case, mother. Like yeah, in your case, mother, you don't have to uh, do both. If you attend, like you attend in the evening, I mean, it's expensive. If you can afford, it's up to you. But you, you already told us how much, how expensive it is for you. This is enough because you know you, it's the same stuff. For example, I'm gonna say on Friday, we shall also chat same level. But in most cases, I say I always feel the evening ones uh, tend to contribute much more, and because they are, uh, they are they have got working experience, perhaps compared to the ones in the in the in the morning. So what you're saying is now we should we should decide on which class we can manage to attend. We can manage as yes until you are, are you informed. Teaching, because are you teaching this same stuff on Friday? On Friday, yes. Oh, okay. Meaning that the next class uh, for B B to C F A D will do that next week. Yes, we are going to do next week. Okay. Yeah, sure. I think That's it's what I said. The next like Better so you're welcome. Don't make a decision so that to those who don't manage to attend the, the Tuesday one, the morning one, the one, yes, the Friday and one. Okay, looking okay. at the fact that we're not able to view these recorded classes, unless if maybe we're able okay. to view the recorded classes. Okay, okay, no, no, no. Uh, uh, tomorrow I'm at school, and each time I'm going there, I begin to ask, ah, anyway, that's our administrative issues. Uh, I've always insisted and I've always been assured. No, no, no. Anyway, don't worry. Um, no, no, you must be worried. <laughs> because now I have to find a way of administering to my test, to my quizzes. Because if it's going to be like dividing like this, suppose you decide to do it in the morning, today on a on Tuesday, then again you decide to do on a Wednesday. Have you seen there's going to be double? So how do we ensure that? That's why for me, I would have suggested that all, if all people are put online, there should be just one location or one, one time allocated to them so that everybody attends to that, that period of time. Once for all, that's yeah. it. Hazel. What's that? I think yeah. I've also that. done that because I've done both the morning and the evening lectures. They are just the same. Exactly. That's what I mean right? by saying they're the same. Yes. Uh, Madam Sami? Yeah, I was about to say, you on issues concerning tests or quizzes, maybe we can you can just be choosing a, a particular day to say on this particular day. All of you all will do. That, oh, okay. Yes, but with classes, we can just be like this. Because if we're a lot, again, it won't be a good thing. We want to get to have uh, okay. What not? Maybe to be too overcrowded and what not? So maybe yeah, only when it's the, 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 the classes do that go up to two hundred, madam. Yeah, and they are all yeah. able to lo as we are mature as tiny. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, thank you for your suggestion. Let me listen to them. Yes, uh, Mr. Was that Mr. Banda? You were also contributing something. Yeah, but I wanted to say um, let let just let just the day class be the day class, okay. and the evening be the evening class. So if if a person oh. has wants to decide to attend another class, they can just decide to attend 
but we should leave the classes as they are. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, because the no. timing, the timings could be, could be not, couldn't be favorable to some to some people if you want to mix them at a certain particular time. So, I think it would be nice if we just leave classes as if if it's an evening class and Dio, or let evening Thank and you. Dio have their own, and let the other guys be. Then for tests, we can always write together. It's not a big deal. And just announce the time and date for a particular test. Then everyone write at that particular time. Okay. Okay. No. Thank you very much. Okay. So we wish you the best. We will see you uh, next uh, Tuesday. Stay well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Mm-hmm.